The horse is warming up for today's first race, our quarter horse derby trials. And Danner right now, the 2-5 to five favorite, 4-1 to one on number 5. She's pretty awesome as they have about one minute to post time. But uh, Danner, the overwhelming favorite. And we'll uh, check in with everybody after the race as the horses start to head toward the uh, starting gate for the 400-yard first of two quarter horse derby. As you can see the starting gate there, right behind the Lowe's Superstore. And there's the 316th pole, the quarter pole, of course, right back there in the back of the chute for a 440-yard race. But uh, anyways, we'll, uh, we'll check in after this race. Just had a photo finish in the first leg. Final time, 20.38 seconds, of course. Time of the essence here with these quarter horse derby trials. Results of the photo between number six, Danner, and number four, Royal Lakota. I think Danner got it, but it was close. So let's uh, keep our eye out on the tote board here for the photo coming up. Photo finish, and the winner, number six, Danner, second, number four, Royal Lakota, third, number three, Hooters and Beard, fourth, number five, she's pretty awesome. Again, the final time, 20.38 seconds, as Danner wins the first of two quarter horse derby qualifying events. Horses warming up for the second of the two quarter horse derby qualifiers right now four to five on Easy Gamer. Nine to two on number three Hawk and Doodle Lou. Five to one on Wild and Sexy, who I think is a good upset chance in this race. But uh, Easy Gamer taking all the support. The horses gonna be making their way over toward the starting gate shortly as they finish their warm ups and we'll uh, wrap up the uh, derby trials after this race. Not sure if everybody can see the time there, but 19.95 seconds for Easy Gamer. A absolutely monstrous win in the second of the two quarter horse derby trial wins. She won, I called it four and a half lengths. Uh, Gary, we got an official margin on that win? Four and a quarter lengths, the official margin in a quarter horse race. So a big, big performance from Easy Gamer for trainer Scott Raley and Joe Crispin and much the fastest qualifier. In fact, that race about uh, 0 .40 seconds faster than the, uh, the first qualifier. So significant, significant performance here by... Easy Gamer. She's now 8 for 10 in her career. Never been out of the exactus, so she's uh, cementing herself as one of the top quarter horses here at Portland Meadows uh, for this season. So there's the quarter horse derbies. We'll check in with you a little bit later on. we got coming up the uh, Willamette River Stakes. It's race number 8, $15,000 for the uh, big prep for the Portland Meadows Derby coming up on March 23rd. Had the good fortune of a uh, one of our betters bringing in a couple of old programs from uh, from Portland Meadows years past. Here's one from the 1989-90 season. Here's one from all the way back in 84-85. And then this one, I believe, from 82-83 is the farthest back. But it's kind of fun to look through some of these old-style programs. First of all, I remember the uh, the old-style pocket program as they were. You had the racing form of the pocket program. Of course, now the program's containing much, much more information. But uh, I always love these old pocket ones. Love the Miller High Life. All the beer ads in the old programs are hilarious. I noticed the hotel here, with Red Lion, $59 a night for the racing package. I know right now you can't get a room there cheaper for $100. So that goes to show you the inflation of, of hotel prices. But kind of fun to look through some of the old names in here and some of the old fields. you got Cami Papineau, Jerry Takeda, who's now one of our agents. He was a jockey there. Uh, I don't know if anybody can uh, can read all that through the uh, camera here. Shauna Barber, Scott Berkshire, Bill Southwick, a leading rider here for years and years and years. It's kind of fun to uh, look through these old programs. And I always like to look at the jockey and trainer standings from back then. And uh, <clears throat> this particular year, Dr. Jack Root, who's a, a vet here and a breeder, was uh, tied atop the training standings with A.T. Tex Irwin with Keith Drebin just in behind looming in the third spot was was Keith Drebin, Dan Markle, and Emerald Downs regular. Roland Ferguson, fifth in the standings. He's still around here. Pat Mullins had a good season here at Portland this year. Steve Fisher, a high percentage barn as always, and he was uh, back 20 years ago as well, uh, along with Valerie Lund there. Some of the uh, the names of interest in some of these old programs. I just thought it was kind of cool. I wanted to show everybody some of these old uh, these old ads. <laughs> Apparently, Miller High Life beer was a uh, very popular beer back in the day. It's a horrible, horrible, disgusting tasting beverage, but that's just my personal opinion. But you can see some of the old ads for the Red Steer Restaurant, and uh, some of the old car ads are pretty hysterical as well. But just kind of neat to uh, see some of the old, uh, the old stuff from the old days. I know a lot of folks like it. There's a Ham's Beer advertisement. I remember uh, the old Ham's commercials with that big bear on the front. But, uh, and then here back on the 1983 Portland Mile Day, there was a belt buckle giveaway. The first 4,000 
full paid admissions on April the 2nd received an official Portland Meadows Mile Day belt buckle. So uh, maybe that's an idea for a future Portland Meadows giveaway. Also thought it was neat that the Elmer's Pancake House was still there in 1982 and uh, serving up some of the best pancakes in town at Elmer's. It's still right down the street here from Portland Meadows and still serving good breakfast. They actually just remodeled it. And back in the day when you can actually advertise cigarettes, 1982 and 1983 at uh, Portland Meadows here. So I just thought people would uh, get a kick out of seeing some of the old programs. And here's the 1984 one. And here's the 82, 83 season one. And uh, the more recent 1991. So, anyways, just thought everyone would th think that was kind of neat. Horses coming out of the track for the Lama River Stakes, $15,000 added. Right now, the even money favorite is number two, Topper's Trooper, who we talked about earlier. There is Topper's Trooper, the big chestnut coming out for Jackie Luis Torres, be a monster. David Lopez right up there, the number one. And here comes Tomcat Jake, will be the next one to come out right now, the eight to five second choice. Who is the morning line favorite? Very well could go favorite once the race starts. Here comes Tomcat Jake. So the uh, $15,000 Willamette River Stakes coming up next here at Portland Meadows. Six, five, eight, and four in the Willamette River Stakes. And upsets abound here. Back of the bus scoring at four to one. Second was number five, Little Man John, who ran a big one. Looked like, in fact, at the 16th pole, like Little Man John might catch back of the bus, but alas, was not able to. So congratulations go out to the connections of back of the bus. Let's see if I can zoom out here and rerun stables. Philemon Alvarado and Javier Matias, the winning connections for back of the bus. The Lama River Stakes. You can see General Jerry Coles right there. You can see the reflection off his head there. And uh, Mike the Bartender coming into the winner's circle. All sorts of Portland Meadows celebrities joining us in the winner's circle. So congratulations to Little Man John, or I'm sorry, back of the bus, back of the bus. And Philemon Alvarado, Javier Matias for their win here in the Willamette River Stakes. Hopefully up next for them, the $30,000 Portland Meadows Derby on March the 23rd. Well, that's going to wrap up our coverage today from Portland Meadows on this Monday, March the 7th. We'll see you back tomorrow. First post, 1240.